You might remember Weedus as a one-hit wonder from the early 2000s with their song Teenage Dirtbag. The song got a bit of a resurgence this year and it was trending on TikTok. What's more surprising is that despite the upbeat nature of the song, the inspiration behind it is really dark. That's what we're going to explore in today's video. Formed in North Port, Long Island in 1995, Weedus, in their 25 plus year history, has had upwards of nearly two dozen lineup changes. But the one constant has been frontman and guitarist Brendan B. Brown. Brown would take a liking to hard rock, metal, and progressive rock, gravitating towards groups including Metallica, Iron Maiden, Rush, and ACDC. It would be these groups that convinced him to pick up the guitar early on in his life, with him telling HighArrow.com, ACDC was just the coolest. He, referring to Angus Young, was wearing a school uniform and was a snot-nosed brat playing the guitar and I could relate to that. Rush influenced me because they could do anything. They were like wizards. They had the worst but best video clips ever. It was when Brown was 10 that a horrific murder took place in the woods behind his house. A 17-year-old teen named Gary Lowers would be stabbed to death. His body would be left in the woods for several weeks before being discovered by the police. The perpetrator of the crime was a teenager named Ricky Casso. In the aftermath of the killing, Casso supposedly showed the body to his friends and bragged about the killing to nearly two dozen teenagers who knew about the murder before the police even did. It would be a girl who overheard some kids talking about the crime and made an anonymous call to the police about the body. Casso already had a long rap sheet having previously been charged with grave digging and prior to the murder his parents tried to have their son committed to a hospital after a failed stint in drug rehab, but the doctors found their son was just antisocial and didn't think he was psychotic, so they chose to send him home. The murder would take place a few months later. By this point, Casso was living on the street, selling drugs, and he would be found by the police sleeping in a car. The motive behind the murder was that Lauer stole several bags of drugs off Casso at a party after he passed out, and Casso would claim that the devil told him to carry out the murder. The perpetrator would be arrested wearing an ACDC shirt, and his love of rock music coupled with the Satanist overtones of the crime caught the attention of the press and concerned parents. A few days after his arrest though, Casso would end up taking his own life in his prison cell. Rolling Stone would write a story about the murder, and the article would interview the perpetrator's friends and acquaintances, two of which would be described by the magazine as being, and I quote, veteran dirtbag street kids. The murder would result in future Weedus leader Brendan Brown's parents sending him to a Catholic school an hour away from their home. Brown's love of hard rock and metal soon made him a target at school and he was heavily bullied. It resulted in Brown having a lonely social life and finding solace in playing guitar, something he'd spent upwards of 14 hours a day doing. Amidst all the bullying, Brown soon developed coping mechanisms telling Rolling Stone, if somebody called me the F word, I would just taunt them in a high girl voice. I would get beat up by older kids and there would be a lot of homophobic slurs. They didn't know anything about you at all, it's just what they said. I found that it would compress time that you're actually having the expletive kicked out of you if you antagonize them by donning a girl's voice. In fact, that coping mechanism would make an appearance in the song as Brown would sing what was thought to be the female parts of the track. It was around 1995, just after the formation of Weedus, that Brown came up with the song Teenage Dirtbag, telling The Guardian, I'd had the riff in my head since college. I wrote Teenage Dirtbag lying on a futon staring at the ceiling in a rental apartment on Long Island, New York. The song is fictional but has a bit of scenery from my childhood. I wanted the chorus to be defiant. The murderer was wearing an ACDC shirt and after the murder, those letters came to mean Antichrist Devil Child. I was an ACDC fan so I became a dirtbag in the eyes of the authorities of my little seaside town. And when I sing I'm just a teenage dirtbag, I was like, well, what difference does it make? Because you've made up your mind, haven't you? Despite not going to a typical high school and not being around girls or dating, Brown would take some inspiration from the John Hughes film The Breakfast Club with him telling The Guardian, the girl in Teenage Dirtbag is wearing keds and tube socks because I was setting the narrative in the 80s. I mentioned Iron Maiden because the number of the beast was the most notorious example of Satan rock at the time. The boyfriend character was based on a nameless conglomeration of many bullies who want to show you their father's gun. As for the person Noel, who was mentioned in the beginning of the song, Brown would tell HighArrow.com, Noel was a classmate of my brother's grade. Neither of us knew her very well, but the name was interesting to me, so I used it. Brown would end up recruiting his brother Peter on drums, as well as bassist Rich Leahy and multi-instrumentalist Philip Jimenez, with the band looking to the internet to get their name out there. Jimenez would tell The Guardian, we didn't have a record deal when we made it and we recorded everything in Brendan's parents' house. 
The internet wasn't really a thing yet, but we put the song up on something called Billboard Talent Net. Within a week, we were the most downloaded song in New York. We've been playing little venues. After that, there were three labels at the shows wanting to sign us. The band would end up signing to major label Sony, who wanted to release their demos as the group's first album. But instead, the band spent their $50,000 advance wanting to re-record the demos properly with better equipment. Brown would tell Rolling Stone, I changed everything. I tore the guitars apart, built them back together again. A lot of prototyping. The thing I wanted it to sound like was like a very fuzzy, yet very punchy wall of sound. It took four years to find out what that stupid song was supposed to sound like, he'd say. The band's label and music executives tried to pressure the group to downsize to a trio similar to Blink-182, who was popular at the time, but Brown refused. The band wouldn't enjoy much success in America, and part of it had to do with their identity being hard to nail down, with Brown telling Rolling Stone, Record executives literally said to me, I need you to re-sing this song more like a guy, because radio won't have you singing like a girl. With pop radio, it wasn't fitting well because it had very heavy guitars, and we talked about guns and dicks and expletive. I constantly was hearing from Sony, you guys are a little overweight, that kind of stuff. Sony would receive the finished album from the band in April of 2000 on the one year anniversary of the shootings at Columbine. The label had concerns over the line about the boyfriend who, and I quote, brings a gun to school. Brown said no to re-singing the line and instead the lyric would be replaced with record scratches. Teenage Dirtbag would be released as a single in June of 2000 and was featured prominently in Hollywood movies and TV shows including Jason Biggs' movie Loser, the show The Hills, Dawson's Creek, and more recently in The Mass Singer and The Girl from Plainville. In fact, the characters from the Jason Biggs movie Loser would appear in the music video. Despite being used by Hollywood and Weedis being an American band, commercially they didn't do very well stateside, finding a bigger audience in Europe and Australia. The song's popularity has only increased in recent years as the pop group One Direction covered the song and social media platform TikTok helped the song reach a whole new audience. Nearly two decades after the song was released, the band undertook the painstaking process of re-recording the track after losing the masters. The band blamed their label Sony for losing the masters, and after the band's first record, their relationship with their label quickly deteriorated, so much so they were dropped after the release of their second record, which didn't receive much of a marketing push. The band would end up re-releasing their second album after being dropped by Sony, taking a parting shot at their label, renaming it Suck Phony. According to Rolling Stone, Teenage Dirtbag still makes up a majority of Brown's yearly income in royalties, telling the publication, I would call it a very fortunate working class musician position to be in. Brown would claim that the pop group The Chainsmokers has to remix the song and since there were no masters, he had to decline. The band is still together even to this day, albeit with a new lineup and still tours. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching, be sure to like button and subscribe and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll Your Stories, take care. Are you sorry? Are you sorry? Are you sorry?